Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, good afternoon, everyone from the central part of the United States of America. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and this is our School of Ministry broadcast. And I'm going to be teaching you a very powerful lesson today that I believe will bless you and strengthen you and help you. And we're finishing our series of lessons on what does it mean to reign in life? This is part number 10. And um, uh, we just welcome you and bless you all in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father God, today I just pray that you administer uh, what needs to be ministered to my brothers and sisters around the world as they watch this broadcast. We praise you and give you glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. 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 Okay. Uh, <clears throat> listen, this is, <clears throat> this is my last broadcast this week. Uh, uh, Monday is Christmas. And uh, I will be broadcasting next week. I think all of my shows, uh, we'll see how that goes. Faye will be joining me Thursday night on Kingdom Dynamics. And uh, Friday on School of Ministry, one week from now, we'll be starting a brand new series. I'll wait to announce it uh, for you. But uh, I just wanted to uh, let you know, praise God, uh, for, uh, for what is going on. So Christmas, we wish you all a Merry Christmas in case I don't say it again. Uh, but thank you so much for joining me today. So let's get started in this final lesson as we've been looking at what the Bible says about reigning in life. How is it possible for us to reign over the things we could face in life while living in this earth realm? I mean, to some Christians, that just doesn't make sense. Uh, the only way to reign in life is to understand uh, that his life, to understand the life of Jesus, to focus on the life of Jesus, to see how he operates in you and how we can reign through him. So we're going to look at some more scriptures today. Uh, I'm really kind of taking the last nine lessons and bringing them together into this one that uh, I hope will bless you as we talk about scriptures pertaining to reigning with Christ, uh, 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 with Christ and in Christ from the heavenly places or the heavenly realms in which we are seated in. And the reason we're seated there is because we are believers in Christ Jesus. So let's go back to our text passage of scripture. We'll read two verses today. I'll give you a little commentary as we go. And in Romans chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, it says, Nevertheless, death reigned. That's past tense. Uh, death, death can be like the decay of life, the going downhill effect, which I'll mention again, of the experience of life deterioration. And it said death, death reigned from Adam to Moses. So something must have happened after Moses, even over those who had not sinned. Death reigned over them, even if they didn't sin, according to the likeness or in the same manner as the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. The him here is capitalized and refers to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Adam fell into the first sin, but the second Adam, who is Jesus, paid for all sin, including Adam's. I want you to understand that Jesus didn't pay for just our sin and not Adam. He paid for everyone's sin. Uh, verse 15 says, but the free gift is not like the offense. Or in other words, uh, 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 religion judges my unintentional error and or my willful transgression. But James 2.13 says that mercy triumphs over judgment. It says, for if by one man's offense many died or many experienced the deterioration or decay of life, for if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift of uh, the, the grace of God and, and the gift by the grace of God of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded 
to many. This is so awesome. All right, now. Keep in mind that death speaks of the decay of life. It speaks of the going down, downhill effect. Many people experience that. They feel like they're going downhill. They feel like they're just not surviving in life. They feel like their life is being deteriorated. But if that's true, if I'm right about that, then here's the thing, folks. We're not supposed to be going downhill. We're not supposed to be decaying in life. We're not supposed to be experiencing a life deterioration. Here I am, 62 years old, about to turn 63 in a little over a week. And the truth is, if I'd have known this message a long time ago and practiced it and believed it, then some things would be different today. And so I have some catching up to do just like you do as well. Praise the Lord. And so as we look at this, we need to keep in mind that Jesus, in spite of this going downhill effect, in spite of this, this thing that we have encountered in life, Jesus came to restore life in the fullest measure, despite how many of you have sinned, <clears throat> or despite how you may have sinned. <clears throat> There's no big sin or little sin, okay? It, despite how you may have sinned in life, Jesus came to give you a reversal of a life deterioration. Uh, the likeness of the transgression of Adam has been uh, overcome by the life of Jesus already. See, you can't overcome sin. You can't overcome sickness. You can't overcome problems. Jesus overcame them for you. You need to learn how to rest in him. Amen. And so the likeness of the transgression of Adam has been overcome by Jesus Christ already, by the life of Jesus. You cannot uh, outdo or fix what Jesus has already fixed for your life. You have been set free by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And so we need to embrace that and walk in that. Okay, now, Adam fell into sin. Okay, we all get that. We need to get off of this. We, we live uh, that the old man uh, gives us trouble. We need to get off of this. The, the old nature of Adam is in us. We need to get past that and stop living by that because the reality is that the second Adam, Jesus, came and brought us out of sin and paid the full penalty for Adam's offense or the transgression that he committed. The free gift of God, which was the gift of Jesus to the world, is not like the offense. So it's important that we stop searching for what the free gift of God is. It's really, really clear. The free gift is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so if, if, if the reality is this. If I sin, <clears throat> now watch this. If I sin, religion will judge me. Okay? If you sin, religion will judge you. It doesn't matter if my sin is an unintentional error on my part. It doesn't matter if my sin was a willful or a deliberate transgression against God. The world will judge me. And when and if I do that, then I am inflicted with judgment. However, God's mercy, God's salvation, and God's grace has already appeared to all men and has put me in the position of an overcomer. Folks, I want to tell you that I do not preach what you will become. I preach what you have become in Jesus Christ. It's not about what you're going to gain. It's not about getting the victory someday. It's not about walking in something someday that God planned for you a long time ago. No, sir. It is about walking in what Jesus has already given you and what he's already promised to you. So let's look at Titus chapter 2, verse 11, and 12, 12, 11 through 14. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. How many men has it appeared to? Now, I know when they wrote this uh, in the book of Titus, I realized that the all men here was a a small amount of people compared to the world today. There was not over 7 billion people on the planet. There was an area of people. But the reality is this. The Bible says that the grace that God brings, uh, the, uh, that grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. So how has the grace of God appeared to all men? Remember that you were not created a human being. No, that's not who you were created first. You were made and born into this life because of your mama and your daddy. But the truth is you were born 
into this life as a spirit being before the foundation of the world. We talked about that this morning, and I don't want to go back there. But that's who you are. And so the grace of God, the grace of God that brings salvation to all men has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Uh, the present age is speaking of their present age, not our present age. We can benefit from this, but we've got to be mature believers about this and knowing that the Bible was not written to us, but it was written for us, okay? It was written to them of where the Bible it is audience uh, uh, relevant, okay? It was written to them, but we get to glean the benefit from it. It says, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous of good works. We need to keep in mind that this is talking about what God did. This may not be even talking about what you feel like because the Bible is not based on what you feel like. The Bible is based on uh, what the word of God says. Amen. Uh, not based on your feelings, not based on your surroundings, not based on what you're going through. The Bible is based on what God did for you in Christ in this lifetime. Okay, now this is not what Jesus will do for us, but it's what he has done for us. And the reason he is speaking to this present age, I think, was because they did not see it yet. However, we've got to understand and we've got to see that the finished work of Jesus is finished amen the finished work of jesus is finished it's done it will not be uh, uh, done over it's irrevocable and it was spread out to all men even though all men do not see it yet and it was and, and again james 2 13 says mercy triumphs over judgment it was the mercy of jesus that cleansed your sin by his blood and even if others judge you for the sin you committed or now commit, our Heavenly Father only sees you as washed clean. So here's the reality. I don't suggest that if you sin that you ignore that sin, but what I do suggest is that you never stop seeing yourself like Father God sees you, and that's clean. He sees you as already washed clean. Amen. So I don't encourage you to ignore that. I just encourage you to see yourself the way God sees you. And that's the power of God's grace and God's mercy upon us. Now, Romans 5, 17 says, For if by one man's offense, the unintentional error or willful transgression, that's the definition of offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive or those who embrace abundance of grace and partake of the gift of righteousness will reign. Present tense. Uh, 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 as a matter of fact type statement will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Therefore, we've got to keep in mind that that uh, it is uh, it really is all about Jesus and we reign only through his life, only through his life, not through our lives, but through his life. Amen. Only through his life. Praise the Lord. Now, I also want to tell you today that it's only by the grace of God, the grace of the finished work of Jesus, not the finished work of you and I, but the finished work of Jesus. Amen. It's only by his finished work uh, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that allows us to receive or to embrace, amen, to embrace what he has done. We embrace or we accept the free gift, the free gift, the free gift of Jesus Christ, the free gift of the abundance of grace, the free gift of righteousness. It's the free gift of the person of Jesus, which en enables us to reign in life. It's the free gift of Jesus and who is the person of, of grace. He is the person of, of righteousness. He is the person of love. He is the person of all things that encompass the attributes and the character of God. And he is in us. Amen. Okay. Now, it's through his life that we are empowered to reign in life. We reign through his life. But the only way we can do that is because of who he is. So to conclude this series, 
let's talk about living through his life. I thought that would be it since we've alluded to it and we talked all around it for nine lessons. Let's take this 10th lesson to conclude this series and talk about living through his life. So let's see what the Apostle Paul has to say in Galatians chapter 2, verses 19 through 21. Here's what he says. <clears throat> for through the law, uh, I, I'm sorry, for I through the law died to the law. I want you to think about that. This is Paul talking. For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. So it's obvious that righteousness did not come through the law. Even though righteousness was uh, uh, may have appeared to them, grace had appeared to them, Abraham walked by the grace of God, but the reality is this, that Paul say, makes it crystal clear, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness came through the law, then Christ died in vain. So we notice here that Paul died to the law so that he could live unto God. Religion in you must die. Whatever you, re you view religion as and whatever God reveals to you that religion is, religion must die or religion in you must die with all of its demands of self-performance, of self-worth, and of self-reliance so that the law no longer hinders you from living the life of Christ. Did you hear that today? All of that, that demand of, of self-performance, of, of self-reliance, and everything I base self-worth on is of the law. It's of religion, and it must die in you because your self-worth and your reliance must be based on the performance of Christ. Amen. And Paul recognized that when Christ died, he also died from himself, that when Christ died, Paul recognize that he died from himself now that paul has died in his need to prove uh, now that paul has died uh in his need to prove anything of himself he now lives through christ i want you to hear this if someone could come and live life for you no matter what you did you got judged on that good person's life you would eventually come to the idea that I no longer have to strive in this. I no longer have to make any effort to be good or bad. I just live off of the life of this other good person that's living life for me. Well, don't you understand that's what Jesus did? He, His good life is what is living, and your life really is set aside in that you died in Christ. Your life is hid with God in Christ. And Paul is now living, uh, the life he's now living is lived through the life of Jesus in him and by the knowledge and faith in what Jesus did in his finished work that was actually good enough for Paul. You know, I've heard people say, give me that old time religion. If it was good for Paul and Silas, it's good enough for me. Well, that just depends on what old time religion is, okay? If we're talking about living life in Christ, then the reality is we need to live life in Christ. Amen. If we're talking about living in based on his life, then we need to live based on his life and not based on the need to perform in our life. Yes, I know we do things. Yes, I know we try hard. You know, my goodness, I am a man who studies hard. I work hard at preparing for these lessons, these broadcasts I do every week. But I want to tell you something. It's not about me because if, the, if Jesus in me doesn't speak forth, then you're not really going to get a valuable lesson. And so it's important uh, that we learn uh, what what uh, the, uh, what that means uh, is that, uh, about the finished work is that uh, is the, the 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 to live out of what he has done in his finished work. Did you hear me? To live out of. So if you're going to live out of 
what he has done in his finished work, then you've got to discover what he has done and you've got to discover how that your life come to an end and you're now hid with, uh, with uh, your life is hid with Christ in God. The apostle Paul said, I do not set aside the grace of God, which in the King James, it says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Now, there's a lot of things I could say about that because just using the word frustrate alone. I do not frustrate the grace of God. In other words, you know, the grace of God has done so much for us. It's like, I'm not going to frustrate the grace of God by trying to keep performing to be good enough for God. You can't good get good enough for God. You're already good enough for God. When you were lost and undone, you were good enough for God because you were not created in who you are in the flesh form. You were created as a spirit being from before the foundation of the world. So you are good enough to God. Embrace him today because he certainly is embracing you. Now in Galatians chapter two, verse 21, and we're looking at this from the God's word translation at this time. And he says, I, do, I, I don't reject God's uh, kindness or his grace. If we receive God's approval by obeying the laws in the scripture, then Christ's death was pointless. Reading the same verse from the Amplified Bible says, I do not ignore or nullify the gracious gift of the grace of God, his amazing unmerited favor for if righteousness came through observing the law uh, keeping its ordinances uh, observations then christ died needlessly his suffering and death would have no purpose whatsoever wouldn't that be a sad thing well what he's telling us is that we need to quit living by a bunch of rules and regulations in terms of trying to live by making our self-worth or our value based on how we feel about ourselves this is what psychology will teach you i've studied christian psychology i was a counselor for years and what i've learned is is that psychology will tell you that if you feel good about yourself then everything's going to be wonderful but if you don't feel good about you then your self-worth is at an all-time low. Listen, you've got to realize that in your humanness, even if you don't feel good about yourself, as a spirit being, you need to see yourself who God made you to be, what he says to you, because your worth and your value is in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in other words, grace cannot be received by the demand of you obeying a bunch of rules. I'm not saying run a stop sign. I'm not saying break the speed laws. That's not what I'm talking about at all. We're talking about the religious rules. We're talking about uh, self-imposed rules. See, that would be called self-effort. What I just described to you would be called self-effort. So we cannot uh, uh, operate by self-effort. Anytime we depend on an outcome based on self-effort, the grace of God is nullified even for that moment. Remember when the apostle Paul said that we can that we can fall from grace. That word fall from grace or that phrase there means a momentary lapse in time, which means you can get right back there just as quick as you fell down. So don't re-believe that the grace of God has abandoned you just because you've blown it, you've messed up. The reality is, is anytime again, I want to say it again, anytime we depend on an outcome based on our self-effort, the grace of God is nullified. Every outcome in life is based on his grace and his grace alone. The reason you're breathing today is because of his grace. The reason you have a roof over your head is because of his grace. And if you're somewhere today and you don't have a roof over your head, you're alive because of the grace of God. What I'm telling you is no matter what your situation is, both good or bad, it's all because of his grace and you ought to be joyful and, uh, and rejoice in him today. And what this means is uh, that that the person of grace went to the cross and sacrificed his life so that I could have life. Amen. He sacrificed his life so I can have life and have it in the fullest measure. The law cannot make you righteous. Remember that the law cannot make you righteous with every effort of obedience and self-performance that you could ever uh, uh, could could get out of it. I, I want to tell you that I was raised in an extreme uh, denominational situation, and everything that I was either judged good or bad on was based on how I performed. Now we do good 
just because we want to do good, we please our God, but not because God is displeased with us. We please him because we love him. And it's out of this love relationship that we just go with the flow of Jesus. It's not a self-performance. Again, the, the law cannot make you righteous. When it comes to uh, understanding, and, and uh, what we, we must come to understand and embrace that the outcome of all things is based on his performance in his finished work. Amen. In other words, Jesus performed well. I want you to wherever you're at right now, say that Jesus performed well. You know what that means to me? That means it's not based on my performance. It doesn't mean that I don't do some things that couldn't be considered performance, but it's again, not based on my performance. Jesus performed well. Say that again. Jesus performed well. And the fact that he performed well, you and I reap the benefit of all he did by living by his faith and he lives in me. You talk about an, a scientific mind boggler. Christ lives in me and I live in Christ. It can't even be equated scientifically. He lives in me and I live in him. All right. So to finish up today in this series of lessons, uh, we've been talking about having the wrong mindset. So one of the things that keeps us from reigning in life or prevents us from reigning in life is having a wrong mindset. We've looked at over the past nine lessons, we've looked at three enemies which try to prevent us from reigning in life. Uh, 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 and again, to reign in life means to reign through his life from within us. So we talked about these three mindsets. One, we talked about having a sin consciousness. Two, we talked about having a sickness consciousness. Three, we talked about having a poverty consciousness. In each of these mindsets, there is an a element of, of control or rule in your life that we don't need to be living in. Are you hearing me today? And so what we want to live in is the mindset of Jesus, not in uh, a sickness mindset or in a uh, sin mindset or in a poverty mindset. Praise the Lord. Okay. when we uh, when we are in a constant state of lack, and we, we've been doing the last few weeks on dealing with lack and dealing with poverty, it does not matter if you are struggling with sin, sickness, or poverty. Lack is lack. The, the pressure alone of all of these things can rule your thinking and even what you believe that the Bible means. It's important to know what the Bible means. It's important. That's why there's people like myself and others who dig into the scriptures. Uh, Dr. Richard Rundle, who's present today, and others. And I, I can't read everybody's name, but but many of you that are watching today, there's Pastor Chris, uh, uh, the Pastor Melody, and, and her husband, Pastor Bill, uh, who dig into the word, who hear the Father's heart. Uh, Pastor Faye that's watching today, or Dr. Faye, I should say, who, who's who's in the word. And, and, and understand what the word means and then share it with you so that you can get your head straight about what the Bible means because pressure can rule your thinking. The pressure of lack can distort your view of the Father's love for you. Uh, often people blame those who influence your life for the choice you make, right or wrong, because of someone that taught you and it didn't work and so now it becomes their fault. But listen to this. Uh, even then, the, the father does not change his view of you, even if you change your view of him. Just real quickly, let me remind you before we uh, get to uh, uh, the last part of this lesson. Remember when Adam and Eve was in the garden and God come along and God says, where are you, Adam? And Adam jumps out and says, I hid myself because I was naked. And here's God's response. God said, who told you you were naked? In other words, God's view of Adam did not change. It was Adam's view of God that it changed. And really, if you want to know the truth, it was Adam's view of himself that had changed. Now, you may feel like, and my goodness, here we are just three days from Christmas, and you may feel like you don't have enough money to eat healthy foods, which contribute to your poor health. However, what do you believe alone? What you believe can contribute to health problems uh, uh, that you're dealing with. Listen, 
What you believe can contribute to poor health and what you believe can contribute to good health. It's important to eat good foods. It's important to exercise. It's important to stay busy. It's very important. All of these things are important, but that's not the outcome of what you do. I heard a great minister that pastors one of the largest churches in the world in another country say that he uh, uh, really is big into aromatherapy. It's good for you. It's healthy for your breathing and healthy for your mind and so on. He said, but don't put your faith in it. It's just a tool. Keep your faith in Jesus. And so that's what I'm telling you today. And so uh, you, you, uh, you the, the bottom line is, is do you believe that God is able to keep you? I mean, you may be uh, even blame poor finances or, or, or having a bad job or no job at all. But do you believe that God is able to keep you? Do you believe that God is your healer of the healer of your body? Do you believe that God is your soul provider? Well, all of these questions are absolutely necessary today. See, otherwise we would be saying that the lack is greater than our God, that sickness is greater than our God, that having nothing is greater than our God. Why is that true? How is having nothing greater than our God in some people's minds? Because the having nothing becomes your the, the God of focus. Are you hearing me? Your attention goes there. How many know we're told to put God first? Put Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, we're, we're told so, so many times about setting proper priorities and making God our first priority. We're told so many times about those things, yet we allow sickness, poverty, and sin. We allow the lack of things to become our focus, thus the lack becomes our God. Many times the root cause is listening to the lies in the form of that form in our mind, which do not agree with what the word says. We can't allow ourselves to listen to lies. You might be hearing words like this. There's no way you're going to make it. You will never have anything in life. You will never be able to manage what you do have. And the list goes on. Those might be the kinds of things you're hearing in your own mind. But here's four simple rules to live by, I think, that will help you uh, to deal with what I'm talking to you about today. Number one, you should begin to listen to the word of God instead of the lies of the enemy. That serpent of old is still trying to belt out lies and people are still trying to listen to him just to hear what they're saying. You know what? Learn. That's, that's first. You should hear the word of God. Listen to the word of God instead of the lies of the enemy. Second. Simply decide to make a list of priorities for each area of life and follow through with them. So when I get out my calendar on my computer, I get up in the morning, I get my cup of coffee, always got to get my cup of coffee, come to my computer, I have my calendar, it goes to my email, uh, it's up on my screen, I see my calendar and I follow the times that I have listen for all of these things that I've got to accomplish in a day. As a rule, I get them accomplished. Sometimes I don't. But the reality is make a list of priorities and, and follow through with them. The third thing is apply restraint when needed concerning bad company, wrong foods, or compulsive spending, but never put faith in your ability apart from his grace in you. Isn't that good? Never put faith in your ability to manage all of this stuff, but keep faith in the grace of God that's in you. Fourth, never blame others for your mess. Just simply look to the finished work of Jesus and depend on what he did to be good enough to get you out of anything you are presently facing. Those four things are very important. If what you're believing it's not producing what God says in his word, then it's time to change or at least to adjust what you've been believing. No one can deny that wrong believing produces wrong living, just like right believing produces right living. You know what? You keep believing wrong, you're going to keep acting wrong, you're going to keep thinking wrong, and you're going to have a wrong, uh, uh, wrong living in your life. But when you believe right, then things start turning out differently. No one can live right unless they first believe right. And the apostle Paul says, the life which I now live in the flesh, 
right here in this flesh, right here in this earth realm. Here's how I live. Paul didn't talk about living when I get to heaven. Paul's talking about living right here in this flesh. How do I do it? How do I walk in victory? How do I reign in life? Paul says, here's how I do it. I live by faith in the Son of God. I live by faith in what Jesus did for me. I'm banking on that what he did was good enough for everything I need in life. He's the one that loved me, and he's the one that gave himself for me. So today, let your motivation for trusting in the finished work of Jesus be the fact that God loves you, and God sent his son to sacrifice his life so that you could live through him. That's a powerful motivation. Matter of fact, that statement I actually ought to put on Facebook. That's a powerful motivation. That's a powerful tool. Let that be your motivation. It is because of a belief system that is in error, which becomes the reason why we suffer the lack of anything. That's it. Amen. Check out your foundation of beliefs. Praise God. Check out what you believe. Take a look at it and see if there's not some error somewhere. If you can find it, if you can find that error, then at least make the adjustments that I've mentioned today. I mean, these are things you could try, okay? Now, uh, here's Romans 5, verse 14, once again, as we close. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam who is a type of him who was to come. When Paul says death reigned, I, I think he was referring to the decay of life or the going downhill effect, as I call it. When Adam sinned, he was in a sense a representative for mankind. But our loving Jesus became the last Adam, the final Adam, and he set things right again so that you can reign through the one who set things right. You can reign through the one, the Lord Jesus Christ, the last Adam, and receive an abundance of grace and partake of the gift of righteousness and reign in life through his life in us. Someone right now is having joint issues. There's pain in your joints. I particularly see legs, feet, arms, uh, and, and, and wrists, elbows, uh, shoulder joints. I speak healing to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the, the glory of God, for the, the anointing of Jesus Christ in me and in my brothers and sisters. Thank you, Father God, right now. Uh, whoever you are, just begin to praise the Lord. Just begin to say, thank you, Jesus. Just whisper it to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I glorify you. We give you praise, Lord. We magnify you. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord for this healing manifesting in my brothers and sisters who need it today. Father God, I just glorify you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm going purely off of what I feel the Lord is telling me. I don't feel this in my body, but someone your left ear, your left ear, uh, and, and you may be one who's having difficulty in your right ear. You can receive this for your right ear also. But I just speak healing to your left ear in the name of Jesus. Many people have hearing problems, and I can, I can play a, pray a blanket prayer, but I just feel specifically to target this, uh, this left ear down inside your ear. There seems to be an obstruction. I speak healing to that, that obstruction to be gone. I really sense that it's a growth of some sort. And I command that growth to let go and to open up in Jesus' name. And I thank you for it right now, Father. Thank you for it right now, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just pray for my brothers and sisters today, Lord. Here we're about to have Christmas in three days. And Lord, we don't have to celebrate Jesus on December 25th. We can celebrate Jesus 365 days a year. But it is a day we set aside, Lord, that we uh, give gifts to one another, that we bless one another. We do extra kind deeds for one another. And it's just a day we just celebrate the birth of Jesus, even though it may not actually be his birthday. Lord, we just praise you today. Lord, we, I just pray that my brothers and sisters for all back pain, Lord, to be gone right now in the name of Jesus. Someone with a slipped disc, I hear that word, slipped disc, uh, that disc I command to go back into place by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I, I have seen this before, someone with a curved spine. Looking at you, I see your back and I see your spine in the skin. I see it protruding. And in the name of Jesus, I see that back just beginning to move. Thank you, Lord, that that spine is straightening up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, stand up tall. Begin to give glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I just saw a, a picture of a straight spine. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I want you to write me about these things. I won't tell others if you don't want me to. I won't give out your name. Just I just want to rejoice with you. I do by faith right now. But please write me at every show that we do. And God speaks to someone. Right. We've had people that have gotten up out of wheelchairs because someone saw them getting up out of a wheelchair. And then I get a, no, a letter or a note saying I was in a wheelchair. I was in a nursing home. I was here. I wasn't able to get up. And all of a sudden I was able to get up. Praise the Lord. And so it's important. It's very important that we do that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, I just praise you. Someone right now, you've had some sort of a congestion in your bronchial tubes. It's been a little bit hard for you to breathe. Right now, I'm just asking you to do this because something's going to have a miracle is going to happen right now. I just release the gift of the working of miracles right now. Father, I thank you. Now, here's the instruction. I want you to take a deep breath. And right then, you have not been able to do that. But right then, a miracle just occurred. Go ahead. That's all right. Rejoice. Say, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Someone else, when you breathe, you have pain associated on the tail end of that breathing. And maybe that's associated to the per, per, same person. But uh, I just command those bronchial tubes to be opened up. You're breathing to be at full capacity in the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, I just pray this, Lord, that when they breathe, what Lord, what they will feel is like they're actually getting fresh oxygen, brand new oxygen, clean, purified oxygen, healthy. Amen. A cleansing oxygen. A clean, there's a word right there. A cleansing oxygen in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. I bless you. I worship you. I glorify you, Lord. I praise you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our School of Ministry broadcast today. Uh, this concludes this series on what does it mean to reign in life. Next time, we're going to be talking about what the Holy Spirit does in us and through us. And I'm still perfecting the title, but I'll have it for you next week. And when I've got 50 scriptures. I'm going to try to give you five a week and we'll elaborate on those and teach on those in our school of ministry because in our school of ministry, we're not just training ministers, not taught on everything from bishops, apostles, prophets, uh, uh, pastors, teachers, evangelists, elders. I've taught on all of that. I've taught on church functions. I've taught on how pastors get along and various. I've taught, I've taught so many. I've taught on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Tons of stuff because I want to make sure that we're giving you information that will help you. And yes, World Bible School University is not open yet, but when it is open, this is the kind of stuff we'll be teaching, maybe different materials so that we're not giving free material out online. I'm not licensed to do that. We'll be teaching you uh, co college curriculum, but the reality is uh, at that that when students come to World Bible School University, uh, they will work and they will earn their degrees uh, at whatever course of study they go into. So thank you so much for watching my show today. And uh, I just went just from Faye and I from World Bible School International Training Center.
World Bible School University from Bill Henshew Ministries. Uh, we just wish you a, 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 from Live Talk with Faith, from the Faith Unlimited magazine, praise the Lord. In its uh, uh, fourth year, I believe, in its fourth year, there's three and a half years of mo magazines every month on our website. Go to BillHandshewMinistries.org and find Faith Unlimited, and you'll see all of the issues of the magazines. Uh, anything that doesn't work, let me know, but I, I'm sure that every single issue, you click it, and it will open up to uh, the magazine. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for being a part of us in 2017, and uh, I know we've got one more week to go, but we just wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I will be seeing you next week as we teach the word of God. God bless you, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye, everyone.